Hello, um, I'm John Fawcett. I'm the Director of Studies for Computer Science at Churchill College, and this is Tom Rees, who's interviewing hey. with me today. Um, for the next half an hour or so, we'll ask you some maths questions and some logic questions. Um, if we ask you anything that you've never seen or heard of before, then just let us know, and we'll talk about something else instead. Okay. okay. Um, while you're talking, I'm afraid we may be making notes on these pieces of paper, but please don't think us rude or not interested in what you're saying. We're just keeping track of everything that's been said. Okay. Okay, so um, here's the, f the first question I'd like to explore. Um, what, what do you make of question one? one. Uh, that is just one, because if the um, cos squared of anything plus sine squared of anything is one. So that's right, indeed. Uh, the same thing, sorry. Okay, so this is um, an instance of a familiar identity. So we can write down one so we can keep track of where we are. And um, let's now generalise this to, um, to a situation where these two angles might be two different angles, um, alpha and beta. Okay. Um, how do alpha and beta need to be related for this new equation to hold? Uh, so, obviously, if they are the same, we already explained, then that would be fine. Um, mm -hmm. <coughs> if we have values... So we want... Um, we could change alpha to anything before. So if we uh, allow it to still be changed. Um, okay, so uh, we want sine squared beta to be the same as what it was before. Okay. So mm -hmm. that means that sine beta must be plus or minus what it was before. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's Would you like to a few um, keep variables. track of your, your equations here? Uh, oh, yes. So, uh, so you've had sine squared beta uh, equals, so it's still got to be 1 minus cos squared alpha. Agreed. Mm -hmm. uh, which means that sine uh, beta has got to be uh, plus or minus uh, Sine alpha. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that is true for. Uh, look on the circle. <laughs> um, say uh, sine is going to be the y coordinate. So we want the y coordinate to be the same, but it could be on up the same on either side. Right. So mm -hmm. it will be. There'll be a rectangle of points on the circle. So four angles per two pi. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, these ones look like they're going to be pi apart from each other. So which of these angles is alpha? Uh, it could be any of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, how can we relate beta to alpha using this diagram? Uh, <coughs> so beta is either a multiple of pi off, mm -hmm. so the pi off, and then we can add 2 pi to any of the answers we've got. So okay. that'll be any multiple of pi mm -hmm. uh, off of alpha. Or uh, that value looks like it's pi minus alpha. Right. So it could be pi minus alpha plus any number of, uh, plus any number of pi, because we can get around. Okay. So can you write down a single equation that relates beta to alpha and all your periodic repetitions? I can, I can do two, okay. which would be uh, beta is alpha plus some number n of mm -hmm. pi. Or uh, and n here is? An integer. So Any integer, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, or beta is going to be pi minus alpha plus some integer number of pi. Right. So I guess we could combine those by doing uh, just a plus minus alpha at the start. So yep. beta equals plus minus alpha plus some integer pi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, do you think that's all of the solutions that satisfy our original equation? Or are we missing some? I think that's all of them. Um, yeah. 
I think it's all of them. Mm-hmm. Just for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about the second question? Uh, so e to the naught is one. So that straight away mm-hmm. simplifies down to just pi. Agreed. There. Uh, so that's pi. Oh, that's pi. That's pi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that uh, that whole thing would be three pi over two. Right. Um, so then we want cos three pi over two. Mm-hmm. Um, which on our circle three pi <laughs> two. Uh, would be over here, so cos would be zero. Mm-hmm. So we read uh, ln of zero, mm-hmm. which um, doesn't have a value. Right, okay, yeah. So we just leave it at ln zero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is undefined. Yeah. Okay, um, let's have a look at, at a second question. So um, in this situation here, we have a, a ferry crossing system. Um, we've got lots of delivery companies that want to get their vans across this river. Okay. And the ferry company operates this shuttle service that can take vans across the river, but only one van at once. Okay. And uh, what it would like to do is um, treat all the delivery companies as fairly as possible. Okay. So um, how would you suggest the ferry company asks the delivery companies to, um, to organise their vans on the, uh, the sending side of this river? Uh, so if you just had them in one long queue, mm-hmm. then uh, the first... What, what, sorry, what do you mean by fairly? Right, that's a good question to ask. So let's start off with a very simple definition of fair, where we mean the same number of vans per day get across the river for each company. Okay. So if we line them up in one line for each company, Mm -hmm. and then just go along them one by one, taking a van, so they take a van from this company, and then take a van from this company, and then take a van from this company, when we get to the end, take a van from the next company. And what happens if if at some time uh, we come to take a van from a particular queue, but that delivery company doesn't have any vans in their queue? Can we just write a tally on the floor saying they've got one extra van and then when we come back to them, take that tally off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take out a second van. So they essentially accumulate credit by not Mm -hmm. using their allocation when their turn comes round. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Does that uh, create any potential fairness problems? Well, uh, if, I guess if a company stores up loads of credit, mm-hmm. then they could like book out a whole day and then none of the other vans would be able to go across. Right. Mm-hmm. Is there a sensible way to fix that? Um, maybe we could make the limit take two vans out at a time and then we go around again. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So have a, a limit on the number you service on each round. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, You asked what I meant by fair, and Mm. I said a basic system would count the number of vans we get across. Mm. But if we wanted to make this a a bit more sophisticated, we might think about the weight of goods that each company is getting across. Um, So if we'd like to take into account the weight of each van, um, how would you use that to um, change your scheduling algorithm? So a company can send, so if one company has much lighter vans, they can send like two lighter vans in, and the other company would only get to send in one. That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess we could again have a credit system on each lane, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, when one lane has enough credit to send a van of the, the next van of weight, when, when uh, one company's credit gets above the amount required for that van of the weight that's sitting there, okay. then that van can go. Right. And then we just keep allocating a small bit of credit. 
and, and allocate yeah. a small credit uh, to, to each queue, to each queue. Uh, as we go around. Yes. I see. Mm -hmm. um, so does this require us to know the weights of all the vans in all the queues? Uh, we're, so we're assuming that a company doesn't mind if it's... So the company is choosing the order in which its vans are going through. Right. So we're only looking at the first, the next van from each company. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, okay. So we only need to weigh the first van in each queue. Yeah. Um, this, uh, th this certainly sounds like it will work. Um, it's quite resource intensive in having to weigh every single van. Is there any way I could just sample the vans every now and again? Maybe sample two or three of a company's vans a week? Um, rather than having to weigh every single van they bring to uh, my ferry port. And then store that value of their van, like take an average of their van, are you suggesting? Right, okay. yes, take, keeping an average, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say, I guess at the start of the week, weigh each of the vans mm -hmm. in the front. And then, um, or maybe do that for the... Or just weigh each of those vans and then assume that all the other vans are going to be the same weight. Right. Mm -hmm. And then apply the same algorithm for just um, consider the weight of the next one to be what the previous one was instead of mm -hmm. um, weighing it again. Right. So what is exactly is the choosing algorithm? Um, suppose we have um, three delivery companies whose vans are two tonnes, three tonnes and four tonnes. Mm. Um, in what order would your algorithm uh, deliver vans across the river? Uh, I haven't specified an order, so I guess it'll be whatever order the lanes are in, because we're just going, we're iterating through each lane that a van is in. Mm -hmm. So whichever one is first, I guess. Okay, so you take whichever one is first, so let's suppose they're in, in, in number order two, then three, then four, for okay. the sake of simplicity. Yeah. Um, oh no, sorry, because we were storing up, sorry, we we were storing up credit for each of them, weren't we? So the two one will reach its credit first. Okay. In my mm -hmm. so it, it depends two. where you initialise the credits to. But okay. Oh, right. If you initialise the credit to zero, mm -hmm. and then maybe add one each time, the two will reach credit first, and then we can send the two across. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll send first. one van um, of mass two tonnes. Yeah. Um, then what? Then, uh, then that one's credit goes back to zero, but the other two's credit has credit of two. So the next one to reach the credit required would be the van of three tons. Okay. So our next van will be a three-ton van. Yeah. Then which is the next van? Then uh, there's two lanes that are equal now. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll do them in turn. So we'll do uh, four then two, or two then four. Well, okay, so this is an interesting question. Do you want to uh, give a second van to uh, the two-ton queue, or do you want to give the four-ton queue its first van? Uh, probably the four-ton queue its first van. The four-ton queue first. Okay. Sounds slightly mm -hmm. fairer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one, and then another two-ton van. Okay. Um... And then, uh, yeah, we keep track of the credits, but I think, so the four-time queue and the two-time queue, the credit will be at zero. Mm -hmm. And the credit on the three-time will be one. Agreed. At this point. Yep. So we're at uh, zero, one, zero so far. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. So we'll go through, and it'll be one, two, one. Uh, it'll be one, two, one. And mm -hmm. so and nothing will happen. And then it'll be two, three, two. Mm -hmm. And we'll send out a three and then a two. Okay. So send a three, and then a two. And then so that will give us two zero zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll have three one one four two two. And so we'll okay. send out a four and then a two. Okay. Uh, it looks like we've got a pattern now. 
Yeah, does this pattern ever repeat? Uh, I assume it will, yes. So we've got... Um, the only thing that's stored in the system is these numbers. Mm -hmm. So if if we ever get to one of these, a set of these numbers that we've seen before, mm -hmm. then it's as if we've jumped back. There won't be any difference when we run it the next time. Right. So if we wanted to um, ring up these delivery companies and tell them what times of day we'll be able to service their queues, so when we can get their lorries across the river mm -hmm. so they're not just sitting in a, a long queue all day, um, mm -hmm. how would you go about producing those times of day? Uh, so you could just simulate that room, or uh, it looks like the um, or we we could run through these numbers until we get a repeating number, because then we know that that's the loop that will be cycled through. Right. Yep. Um, and then get the list from that and then repeat that. Okay, and then just an annotate that with the times of day based on how long it takes to sail across the river and back. Yes. Um, does this make any assumptions about how the ferry works? Uh, it seems that the fact that it can fit one van is by space rather than by weight. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no weight limit on our ferry. <laughs> yeah. Which is uh, miraculous. <laughs> we, we can load it up as high as we like. Um, um, in thinking about the, the, the time of day schedule, um, are we making any other assumptions about how this ferry can get across the river and back? Uh, yes, we're assuming it can get get across and back at the same speed every at all times. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this uh, this lorry delivery mechanism can deliver lorries at the same rate regardless of the mass of the lorry. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's, it's quite a, a good ferry. Um, <laughs> but that's a limitation of this model. Okay. Yeah. Um, Right, if we suspected that one of these ferry companies uh, was was cheating our system, um, or we just wanted to apply differential pricing, um, so so that is, uh, companies would pay less to have um, a, a less good quality of service. Mm. So maybe we charge them less per lorry to get across the, the river, but in exchange they may have to sit longer in the queue, waiting for their turn to come round. Mm. Um, how could you build a, a sense of prioritization into your scheduling algorithm? So we could just manipulate the weights, say the standard rate, they'll double the rate, double the weight. And if you have to pay more, then you have the, just the weight on that system. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. So um, double the effective weight of everybody's lorry unless they pay you more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good way to make money. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is that the same as saying um, give more credit to each queue uh, in each round if they pay you more? Um, or does that change the way the scheduling algorithm works? I think it would be the same because... Uh, so if you took all of the numbers in the algorithm and divided them by two, including the amount you increment by, mm -hmm. then it should be the same. Agreed. So. I think it, it will be the same if you multiply the weights or if you uh, shrink the increment. That's right, yeah. Th these numbers are on a completely arbitrary scale. So as you say, we could double them all or halve them and it wouldn't change the ordering. Mm. Um, just changes the absolute value. Okay, um, that brings us to the end of the interview. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, can you remember your way from here back to the main building? Yes, thank you. Right. Thank you very much.